Uh, to get into this message today, it's uh, I'm gonna call this message uh, "Lazarus Come Forth." Lazarus Come Forth. I, I got a few scriptures we got to get to, and uh, just thinking about a whole lot of things this week, and uh, I felt like uh, that. I was a Bimelech and and uh, Millstone got cast out of the tower and hit me in the head and and killed me. That's what I felt like Monday. Not not physical, okay, but in my mind and and you know we we had a little group up here on Wednesday night and we t- we discussed it. Uh, uh, physically, I felt fine, but when the Lord gives you revelation. Uh, there's a lot of things that takes place in that revelation. For one thing is a judgment. Now, uh, I'm going to be teaching a class on judgment sometime, but I'm just going to give you the hot spots, okay? Uh, what that judgment is, in our mindsets, we always think judgment means punishment. You know, I was talking to my son Stevie the other day, and we think, well, judgment means you 40 stripes or 39 stripes or punishment. Judgment is division. Yes. Okay? It divides light from darkness. It divides life from death. Yes. And, and when, a divi- when judgment comes into you, there's a division made and you think, oh my gosh, I thought this was life. But it was. It was death. It was death. But there's a reason for that. Okay? And we're going to see in this message today, Lazarus come forth. My first scripture is going to be in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. For God who commandeth the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, when I read scriptures, I like to break them down and look at them real close. and Look who made this light to shine. God commanded the light to shine. The the light to shine. But here's the thing. Where at has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God where at in the face of Jesus Christ. So where is the glory of God located? In the face of Jesus Christ. Now verse 7, but we that's us, have this treasure. What is this treasure? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God. That's the treasure. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels, which is what? This body. So we have this treasure we're at in this body. We don't have to go anywhere to get a treasure. We got this treasure in us. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Wow, did you get that? It may be of God and not of us. I think that's where I got hit in my head. Because I think sometimes you can get, you start giving a man a little too much power. But right here he says, I want you to see this glory. I want you to see where this glory comes from, where this glory is, where you have it at, and that you will understand that it's not of you. It's of God. It is of God. (coughs) And what what I want to do is, I I told you a couple weeks ago, we've got to bring some things into definition. Now, uh, here's, here's what we do with definition. Okay? What we do with definition is we say this word means this and we give it a definition, right? We, we say uh, the door. The door means a, 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 an entrance point where you can go in and out of a certain room. We give a definition. That ain't what I want to do. When I say bring things into definition, what I'm talking about is bring them into the view and have them be defined in Christ. You you see the difference? I want them to be defined in Christ. What is Christ's definition? So for me and you, the door means to go in this room and out of this room, but Jesus says, I am the door. 
Yes. That's a whole different definition. Because yes. to me and you, a door is a thing. Right. But in here, the door is a man. Yes. You see? In our whole Christian concept, the resurrection is an event. But his definition is, I am the resurrection. Yes. Yeah. You see? Amen. we got to bring things into their proper definition. And that ain't man's definition. We can look up the Greek word, and we can look up the Hebrew word, but we got to bring these into definition in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. And that's what we got to do. That's the reason I want to... We're going to bring some things into definition today. That the, uh, We're going to bring... Uh, the church into a little bit of a definition to give you a different view. Yes. Okay? Something, something. maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't. But we got to have uh, this view. Uh, look at it like this. Uh, we have a view that is a view on the, the death of, of Christ. The death of Jesus. That's one view. But now we got to bring this view over here into the light. You see, two different views, same thing, but two different views. So we gotta. So what we want to do is bring this emphasis from this death over here into this life. Okay, you with me so far? And this is the defining view. Okay, I got me some notes right down. I have to look on these notes here. We we gotta have this thing defined in the heaven. Okay, and and see, I'm I'm telling you guys these things because. <laughs> Um, I know you guys can handle it, okay? I mean, there's some people that think things are way far off, but I just read to you that we have this treasure, the knowledge of the glory of God in mm -hmm. earthen vessels. Yes. You want to know where your... It says lay up your treasures in heaven, but it, right here it just says you have this treasure right here in earthen vessels. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now what we got to do is... Now, now here's the difference in preaching. Here's the difference. What I would have told you two weeks ago, I would have said, we got to tap into that treasure. Mm -hmm. Right? we got to tap into that treasure. Yeah. But now I'm going to say, now that treasure ain't yours. That treasure just needs to shine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Because see, by me telling you, you got to tap into that treasure, I'm putting you back into work. That's right. That's right. I'm putting you back into work. So I'm saying, no, you don't even do nothing. You just let the treasure come forth. Let the treasure flow. Do you, you see the difference? Yes. Okay. And man, beam like got hit in the head by a millstone. <laughs> got hit in the head. I'm glad he got hit in the head. Okay? Because I heard this morning, we got to do this, and we got to do this. And we, Jesus, I mean, the disciples would say, what must we do to work the works of God? Only believe. Believe on him whom he has sent. But my God, that doesn't sound right. I've got to do something. Yeah. I've got to do something. I've got to manifest. I've got to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to a scripture. Now, you guys that was up here on Wednesday, don't answer this, okay? <laughs> don't answer this question. But I'm going to take you to a scripture, and I'm going to show you the difference here real quick. This is a side note. This is a free section. Okay, everything else costs. <laughs> but this is the free part right here, okay? Uh, go with me to James, okay? Now, you guys that was up here on Tuesday, this don't give y'all permission to sleep. <laughs> okay? But uh, James chapter one, but be uh, verse twenty two. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now it says to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Who's deceived according to this verse? Our own selves is deceived. Why? Because we're not a doer of the word. We're uh, we're a hearer only. So our whole life we've been told, here's what you got to do to be a doer of the word. Yes. You got to do this. You got to manifest this. You got to go do this. You got to let. You got to tap into the treasure. You got to walk this way and talk this way and walk like an Egyptian and do all these other. Yes. Right. Okay. Let's go on and let's bring this into definition right here. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like. A man, so we got a hearer, not a doer, and we're going to get a dis description right here. He is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass, in a mirror. Okay, he's looking in the mirror. For he beholdeth, oh my God, if y'all are looking at that, who's he beholding? Himself. Oh Lord, <laughs> this ain't about you, boo boo. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 
You're looking in that Bible to find you. I looked in that Bible to find me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will. The volume of the book is written of me. We're looking in the Bible, finding ourselves, and it's got to stop. Yes. The yes. Bible is about Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Yeah, that's Jesus. Right. It's about Jesus. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. We're looking in there, and we're beholding ourselves. Now look, he beholdeth himself, for he goeth straightway, forgetteth what manner of man he was. That, that, that whole phrase, what manner of man, means excellent. So in other words, you looked in the mirror, you read this Bible, and you found yourself. I need to tap into the treasure. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I need to do this for the Lord. I need to do this for the Lord. You're a hearer and not a doer. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because you didn't stand there and look. Be a doer of the Word. Now what does the, what does the doer do? But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and he continues therein, he being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So what is he doing? He's continuing and he's looking for nothing but Jesus Christ. And he continues. That's being a doer of the work. Looking for nothing but Jesus Christ. That's why sometimes he would tell them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to give you a little end right here from the beginning, okay? We always want to, and here's the way Christian people talk. Man, I got saved in 1975. I got saved in, in 1988. Well, I got saved in 2012. <coughs> and, and so where is salvation? It's always behind you. But if I'm beholding something, where is it? It's always in front of me. Behold, the salvation of God is always in front of you. See, we, we've got a backward view. We think salvation is something behind us. Mm -hmm. But behold, and the salvation is not a thing. The salvation is a man and he's got a name, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see? Bring these things into definition. So I just want you to see to be a, a, a doer of the Word. I want you to see Jesus. See Jesus. We got, and so we've got to bring this, this believer in, into, into view. Brought him into definition, okay? And, and look, we think we know ourselves. We do. I mean, you think you know yourselves better than anything. Let me tell you what Paul says about knowing his self. And this is why we got to have this. I, this is just a little scripture right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of a man's judgment, yea, I judge not mine own self. He said, man, I don't even know myself. I don't even judge my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Now listen to this next verse in verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Now what do we say to start with in Corinthians? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Yes. So he says, don't judge nothing until, look at that verse right there, until the Lord come. That doesn't mean He's coming back in the sky, riding the fire, until He come, until He appears in you, until you see Him. And let me tell you what, there's only one reason that you will not see the Lord. Only one. The Scriptures will tell you. Until the heart turn. There's a veil. This is what the scripture says. Until the heart turns, there's a veil. I mean, that's scripture. So we, we think, Lord, why are you hiding yourself? Why? Are you? He's not. The heart ain't turning. And he knows. Does he not know our heart? Does he not shine down in our hearts and say, mm hmm, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I'm on a roll here, so y'all stay with me. Uh, we're going to Colossians chapter uh, 3. Now we're talking about we're talking about Jesus and this light shining in our in our hearts. Okay? So Corinthians 3. Now remember we've got to bring this believer into definition. If ye then 
That's us, right? If ye then be risen with Christ. Now this right here is not popular preaching. Seek those things which are above. Now what he's talking about is another realm. Seek those things which are above. Now I wonder what things he's talking about. Because remember we have this treasure in earthen vessels. He said that's what you ought to be seeking. This treasure that you already have in earthen vessels. Seek that. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, here's what we do with that verse. We'll, we'll change it around and we'll say, don't set your affection on earthly things. And then, and then here's what we do. We make a judgment and we start determining this is an earthly thing. That's a spiritual thing. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible says, do not set your affections on things on the earth. Why? Because the cross stood between the two realms of heaven and earth. And he made a clear division. And he said, all this right here is belongs to the first creation. And I've done away with it. Do not put your affections there. Set them on things above. Do you, do you see the difference? A judgment. See, that judgment has to work in our hearts. Now, I'm going to tell you what, how many Christian people do you know get mad all the time about elections and about everything else that's going on? He says, look, if you're risen with Christ, don't even put your affections on them. Now, now here's the way it's, it's preached out there, and I hope I, the Lord will give me liberty to get this out there. We'll say that we're in this situation and then we're praying a whole time to get out of the situation. Right? I mean, that's our whole prayer. Lord, get me out of this. Lord, get me out of this. Lord, get me out of this. Yes. And the Lord ain't wanting to get you out. He's wanting to manifest Himself in the situation. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Big difference. We're wanting out. He's wanting in it. Yes. <laughs> He's wanting in it. But He needs a body to be in it. And that body is us. We are the body of Christ. I mean... How, I mean, gosh, oh, I mean, I just think, oh, gosh, disease and famine and all this other stuff going on. And we think, oh, Lord, I can't wait to get out of this. I can't wait to get out of this. And he says, man, I can't wait to get in it so that I can speak to it. Yeah. See, it's just a difference of a mindset. Just a difference of a mindset. But see, if your affections are there, then you're bothered by everything. You don't like this. You don't like who's in office and who's in charge. and all. He says, don't even worry, but our kingdom is not of this earth. That's right. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. You cannot mix. Listen, I want to tell you this. I don't care how many people want to tell you that you try to do this in politics and all this. They do not mix. There's a thing right in between them called the cross. Amen. And all these things are things on the earth. And do not even concern yourself with things on the earth. Set your affections on things above. If you then be risen in Christ. Okay? That's hard. That's hard. And that's not popular. Okay? We want to mix the two. He didn't come to mix the two. He come away to do away with the one that he might establish the second. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Now let's keep on reason. Keep on reason. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Why? Verse 3. For ye are dead. Now, buddy, I'm telling you what, that's uh, some real good preaching. A lot of Christian people, you come in there and tell them, guess what? You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. Guess what? You're dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Yes. Now listen. I mean, this is where I'm being like, really got me in the head this week. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. He didn't say when Jim Moore appears. He never said when Cloud appears or Oakley appears or Kathy appears. He said when Christ appears. Yes. Only one appearing, and that is of Christ. Yes. And He is your life. Yes. When He appears, Amen. then ye shall appear with Him in, also appear with Him in glory. Now, let me tell you something. It didn't say when Christ who giveth life appears. Did it? It says when Christ who is your life. Big difference, ain't it? We want Christ to give us life. Christ give me life. He says, no, I am life. Yes. Yeah. Say it again. Life. I am life. Yes. I am your life. Yes. You're dead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
And I am your life. Yes. You're not going to live. I'm going to live. That's right. You're not going to live. I'm going to live. Because when Christ is risen. Yeah. And, and listen to this. He says, Then ye shall also appear with Him in glory. Now here's how we do that. Here's how we do that. We'll say that I went in the room and Clyde came in also. I went to the store and Clyde went also. Right? That, that's not what that, that word also means. What that word also means is it means that by the same measure. And what it means is by the same degree. It means I do not appear until He appears. Mm -hmm. do, uh, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I do not appear until He appears. Mm -hmm. That's why I titled this message, Lazarus Come Forth. Because mm -hmm. you do not appear <laughs> until Christ appears. That's right. Do you see that? Yes. You might think you appear, but yes. you're dead. Yes, that's that's right. right. Okay? And let me tell you something. You ain't coming out of that place right. until you're caught. Yes, until yes. Christ appears. Until Christ appears. You, are are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to hurry here. I'm trying to hurry. We gotta, like I said, we gotta stand there till we till we see Him. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to Revelation. Revelation, not Revelations. Revelation. Yes. One Revelation, a Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter one, verse twelve. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned... Now, the first thing he sees is seven golden candlesticks. But that ain't what he's there looking for. The seven golden candlesticks of the church. He needs to stay there long enough until he sees one like to the Son of Man. Yes. Too many people have turned around and seen something and run off preaching the first thing they see and not stand still and see the salvation. Yes. So now we got all kinds of other things that we think is salvation because they didn't they wasn't a doer of the word. They didn't stay there until they seen him. Okay? Now look, I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned. Let's don't read anymore. Let's just go to verse 17. Because we got an and in there. Now what he's doing is he's giving you a description. But look at verse 17. And when I saw him. Oh gosh, what does that next part say? I fell at his feet as dead. Now brothers, this ain't he had a fainting spell. No. <laughs> he didn't have a fainting spell. He fell at his feet as dead. And you know what? He stayed there until when? He laid his right hand upon me. And he said, Fear not. I am the first and the last. And we ain't even going to preach on that, on that part. I was about to lay the right hand on me. But I want you to see the first thing that he did is he fell at his feet as dead. I just run a quick reference. You can do this. You know Jarius that had the daughter yes. that died? Yes. You know the first thing Jarius did? I always wondered how these things happened. You know the first thing Jarius did? You go read it. He fell at Jesus' feet. And then here comes the little woman touching him of his garment. Guess what she did? She fell at his feet. Why? Right here, fell at his feet as dead. Ye are dead. Yeah. And your life is hid with Christ in God. See, you gotta come, you gotta see this in definition that you don't have no life. You don't have nothing. And you're not going to see this till you see Him. And when you see Him, yeah. you will fall at His feet yes, as dead. Will. Amen. Yes. Amen. But there's a reason. Yes. There's a reason you're going to do this. Why? Let me just throw this out there. Because this sickness ain't under death. <laughs> no, no. Huh? This sickness ain't under death. No. Uh, are y'all with me? Yes. Okay. I, I love that. I love it. Okay, so now we're going to go over right into the meat. Let's go to John 11. John 11. And, and what we got to do is we got to see who comes forth. Who comes forth. Now, I didn't give you these scriptures so that you could see that, so that you would see that the power be of God and not of us. That the light uh, of the glory of, of, of God shines in the face of Jesus Christ. And we have this treasure, which is the knowledge of this glory in earthen vessels. And then if you be dead, when Christ, who is our life, when, when He is risen, not us, when He is risen, okay? And I'm going I'm to bring this in, into view here. Okay? Now, are y'all ready for some uh, gut shots here? I say gut shots because these things knock the breath out of me when I hear them sometimes. <laughs> I think, my gosh, I don't, how can you go tell these people this? I mean, it's stuff they've never heard. I've never heard it either. <laughs> 
When you read the Bible, there, there's terms in there like son of God, son of man. And we use them interchangeably all the time. But do you realize that they're not interchangeable? <laughs> okay, and I just want to throw this out there that every single word in that Bible was given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Yes. 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 So when he says Son of God, when he says Son of Man, but here's the question is he talking about two different sons? <laughs> one of them's the Son of God, one of them's the Son of Man. Is he talking about two different sons? Well, he couldn't be because there's only one begotten of the Father. Yes. But, but let me tell you something. Are y'all ready for this one? The Son of God is not the one who came forth in resurrection. And you're saying, uh-oh. Church split, church split. <laughs> Why did the Son of Man not come forth, or Son of God not come forth in resurrection? Because He is the resurrection. Yes, yes. He couldn't die. He was life. He is the only begotten of the Father. He is life itself. Now let me tell you something about this Son of God. This Son of God exists whether heaven and earth exist or not. Yes. The Son of God exists whether you exist or not. Whether I exist or not, it's irrelevant. He is the Son of the Father. Yes. He doesn't need us in that view. Are y'all with me? And mm -hmm. in, in, as the Son of God, He's got all power. He's got all things, right? As Son of God, He says, No man taketh my life. I lay it down free. Yes. That's as Son of God. But you go read in Acts where it says, God brought forth His Son. How could this be? Do you see, you see the dilemma? Right here it says, No man taketh my life. I lay it down freely. Over here He says, And God brought forth His Son. I mean, how in the world are you going to tie these two together? As Son of God... No man could take his life. He is life. Yes. But as son of man, yeah. Yeah. as son of man, he had to become obedient mm -hmm. unto death. Mm -hmm. You see, what we're talking about here is two views of the same man. Yes. What we're talking about here is his relationship. As son of God, that's his relationship with the Father. Yes. Okay? <laughs> as son of man, guess what? That's his relationship do you see the difference? You see the difference? Okay. So we gotta see this, we gotta see this distinction, okay? Now, the Son of Man had to become obedient unto death. Are y'all with me? Had to become obedient unto death. Now, why did he have to become obedient unto death? Because the first Adam was what? Disobedient. The disobedience of one brought many into condemnation. Yes. But the obedience of one... <sighs> so by the disobedience of one... So, so listen, you remember the other day when I talked about the wrath of God? So we come into His obedience. When we become obedient unto His death, yes. we fall under His obedience. Mm -hmm. Because the disobedience was through Adam. Now where does the wrath of God abide on? The children of disobedience. Yes. Yes. The children who won't become obedient <laughs> unto His death. They want their own life. That's what Adam said. I want my own life. Mm -hmm. I want to do my own thing. Yeah. And where does the wrath of God abide on the children of disobedience? They abide on them over here who won't become obedient unto the death of Jesus. <laughs> you see, we look at that cross and we see that cross as the death of Adam, but it's more. In the death of Adam. Why is it more than the death of Adam? <coughs> when, when we look at that view right there, the obedience of one, because Jesus, uh, Paul says this in Philippians, that he became obedient <coughs> unto death, even the death of the cross. He had to become obedient to it. Why? Because he couldn't die. Because he was alive. So he had to become obedient. He had to obey death. To go into it. Now, in his obedience, he took the first Adam out of the way. Yes. That's only half the view. That's only half the view. Because now, what did we do? We just got rid of Adam. But who comes forth? Mm -hmm. We just read that, that Adam didn't come back forth. That's right. That's right. I mean, 
I mean, we read that Adam didn't get up. No. We read that who got up? Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. So now we got rid of Adam. Now what are we going to do? We got to do something. We, we got to have something here. So we got Adam is gone. A judgment. Boom. Adam, Christ become obedient unto death. He done away with this. But he didn't go to the cross as the Son of God. He went to the cross as the Son of Man. Yes. Yes. Now, you know what he said in John chapter 12? He said, let me just read it to you right here. Let me just read it to you. Jesus answered saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. He didn't go to the cross as Son of God. He went to the cross as Son of Man. The Son of Man's got to go up to Jerusalem and suffer. The Son of Man's got to suffer all these things. The Son of Man's got to suffer all these things. Why? Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die to bite it alone. This is the only way that he's going to get the increase of himself. Right. Not the increase of you or you or you or you yes. or you. This is about the increase of Christ. Wow. Christ. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Because he is all that comes forth. Yes. He says, I will do away with this first creation, Adam. Yes. And when I fall to the ground, when I'm dying as both. See, you don't see this. You just see me dying as Adam. I died as Adam, but I'm also dying as the Son of Man. Because when this corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it's going to bring forth fruit. Nothing but the increase of Himself. Because Christ is the only one who is risen. Yes, yes. Do you see? Christ is all that's risen. Yes. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. okay, are y'all with me? Y'all seeing this? Man, I'm only on page two. I got hurt. I mean, His desire is to have a many-membered sign. Yes. yes, it is. We think, listen, we, 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 get to, we get to thinking sometimes that God has a whole lot of sons. God's got one. one. All He ever views yes. is one son. Yes, yes. amen. We're, the body. We're a many-membered body, but He is looking at one son. He, now, Paul would say it this way sometimes. And John would say uh, <laughs> that we are the sons of God. All that means is we are the increase of Him. Yes. Yes. That's it. Nothing else. We're not the end. So we get this mindset. We read the Bible and we say, Oh, I'm going to be just like Jesus. Uh -uh. There's only one Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's right. Only one Jesus. A name above every name. Okay? Only one Christ. Only one. He's only got one body. Now then this body's got many members. But we are never to manifest ourselves when He is risen. Yes. Yes. When He is risen, you shall appear also. Mm -hmm. If He ain't risen, if He ain't appearing, you ain't appearing. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. Like I said, we're not, we're not dealing with two sons, but we're just dealing with one. Okay? We're just dealing with one son. Okay? So, I, I've done hit a few of these things. So I'm just going to flip over here. Remember what in Revelation, when he said, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me and says, Fear not. You know what he says in the next verse? I am he that liveth and was dead. He's not got a view of the Son of God here. He's got a view of the Son of Man. The Son of God was never dead, but the view of the Son of, or the Son of God was never dead, but the Son of Man is the one who said, I am he that was alive, or I am alive and I was dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see the difference? And see, we've got to stay there until we get this view. Until we're brought into that definition, until we see him, till we see this view of who he is. Okay? Now listen, now look, I'm, I'm here back in John chapter 11, verse 4. This sickness is not unto death. I mean, just think about that. We got, um, well, let me, let me say this. Let me read this verse. When Jesus heard that, He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. This sickness. Now, I'm going to tell you what. If, if, if Jesus would have done me this way, if I'd have been Martha and Mary, 
And Jesus would have done me this way. I don't know if I'd have been following him anymore. I probably wouldn't invite him into the house. If I knew he had the power to heal, and I said, I, I mean, I'm just looking, you know, okay, that, there's Morgan. You know, she's my daughter, and I'm a Morgan is laying there, she's about to die. And I go give word to Jesus. And I'm saying, Jesus, Morgan is about to die. Come. And Jesus kept on staying there. And then finally, she died. And now you're going to show up? I'm going to say, get on up out of here. I don't want you now. I mean, what did they, they go running out and said, man, master, if you would have just been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus knew exactly what he doing. He said, this sickness is not under death. We thought it was under death. <laughs> but it didn't stop that. Now look, there's three things. This sickness is not in... But if you go down and look at that other verse, it says, Lazarus is dead. Wait a minute, Jesus. You said the sickness ain't unto death. But now you say Lazarus is dead. He said plainly, Lazarus is dead. I'd like you to explain that one to me, Big Four. Because <laughs> I'm looking at Jesus. I'm saying, you're telling me this sickness ain't unto death? And you're telling me plainly Lazarus is dead? Come on. God <sighs> Following Jesus is tough. It's tough. I mean, it, it's really tough. And I'm going to tell you what, in your Christian walk, it's tough. It's tough. Sometimes you can think you're doing all the right things and you'll throw a stone down and hit you right in the head and you'll wake up and say, Lord, what am I doing? And I'm going to tell you what, when He hit me in the head Monday, I'm going to tell you where I was. I said, you know what? we got to close that building down. Because I'm done. I can't go. I'm done. I mean, he's killed me. I'm dead. I didn't know the Wednesday. And I thought, wow, well, I had me a three days. <laughs> I had me a three days. I had me a death, burial, and a resurrection. I had me a three days. I'm glad. Because Monday, I was dead. I, I, like I said, it wasn't physical. I felt fine. But Clyde, he called me up talking. I don't even know what he said. I was just going through the motions. Yeah, Clyde. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He knows because we talk. And I was just, yeah, all right. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. I was dead. I was dead. Thanks be to God that he, he gets you back up. This sickness ain't under death. Lazarus is dead. Okay. And I want you to look right here. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. This he, what this is, and you hate to use the word type right here, but, but he loved this man. And this guy is from a household that he loved. These are the beloved of the Lord. I mean, that's weird. Right? These are the beloved of the Lord. And that Lazarus is dying. He, he's dying. And Jesus is tarrying. He's tarrying. I mean, oh my gosh. What are you doing? I mean, where are you at? I mean, we want, we want, we want. But this sickness ain't unto death. But why? It has a purpose. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, who's being glorified? The Son of God. <coughs> hmm. Wow. I mean, that's weird. Eh? So we got the Son of Man's going to suffer. We got the Son. And why? So that the Son of God could be glorified. This sounds weird to me. <sighs> but this sickness, what is this sickness? Now, I ain't talking head colds and cancer here. All right? What is the sickness that's under death? If you go read Romans chapter 8, you'll see the creation was created subject to vanity. Yes. But the same cre creation was created in hope. In expectation. You see, as soon as this sickness started to work its course, course all the way back in the garden, God started making promises. Yes, yes. Started giving them hope. And I could just see Him. I could just see Him in the garden talking to Adam. And see, you don't read this stuff in the Bible, but I could just see Him talking to Adam and Eve and saying, Oh, this ain't under death. This, this that you're going through right here, you see, we got people that just want to go beat Adam and them up and them saying, No, oh, this ain't under death. This is for the glory of God right here. What you're yeah. going through. This is for the glory of God. Absolutely. Now go figure that out. Absolutely this is what it was. you're going through. It's Absolutely. for the glory of God. Absolutely it was. And, all, and plainly, <laughs> Lazarus is dead. How in the world could this be for the glory of God? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, this, this is good stuff, ain't it? It's like I told you. When the, few, the full view of the cross is not the death of Adam. 
That's the only partial view. The full view of the cross is the death of the Son of Man. Except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die. It abideth alone. You see, there's more to this story here of Lazarus than what we think. Okay, most people just think, oh, he raised the dead. He raised Lazarus up. There's way more to this story right here than what meets the eye. He's trying to get them to see this point right here. Okay, and I want you to see this. The cross is not taking anything away from you that Adam already took away. Right? Because the Scripture says, now, now, now listen to this. We say we got to get you on the cross and we got to get you dead. I got news for you. Paul says we were already dead. We didn't put nobody on the cross but a dead man. Because we were all dead in trespasses and sins. But see, now he's going to make a division. Listen to me right here. He's going to take this person who's dead in trespasses and sin, nail him to the cross, he's going to be done away. Now, Paul would say this, now ye are dead to sin. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. These over here that hasn't come into Jesus' death are still dead in trespasses and sin. But now that you've come into obedience unto His death, you are dead to sin. And He would say this, how can you that are dead to sin live any longer yes. therein? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So people want to say, boy, y'all preach that greasy grace and y'all just think you can do whatever. Uh -uh. Once you've been to that cross, brother, you know that there ain't no life in you but Christ. Right. Right. How can you do these things any longer? There's not, I mean, Christ ain't coming forth, or you're not coming forth till He comes forth. You're dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. You see? So, so here comes Jesus. He's, he's, he tells them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And here He comes to Martha, and Martha says, Oh, if you'd have been here, my brother would still be alive. Look, look what He said. Uh, Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Mark said, I know he shall rise again at the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said in her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? You know what he says in Romans? In Romans he says, Christ dieth no more. You know what he says right here? Whosoever believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Can you believe Jesus coming up saying, whoever believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now wait a minute, I'm looking at a dead, stinking brother right here that's dead. Stinking. Are you going to tell me this guy right here is never going to die? I mean, I don't... How many funerals have we been to? And we, we're looking there and we're saying, man, this guy's dead. And you're going to tell him he was a believer. How could he die? I'm just telling you, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, he that believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I ask y'all, do y'all believe that? Amen, I believe. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, you know, do you believe that he that believes in Jesus he'll never die? Do you believe this? Uh, now, you know, and he'll put you to the test. Yes, he will. He'll put you to the test because, you know, the next thing you know, you'll be going to a funeral. I'm just telling you the truth. And you'll be looking at somebody and Jesus will say, well, you called him a believer, but now what, what's going on here? My goodness, how did we explain all these things? Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Yes, he did. I am the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. Never die. Let me tell you what this, this, this cross has to do. Okay? This cross has got to work a wisdom in us. It's called the work of the cross, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't have to go to the cross and be crucified. He already did that. We don't have to be striped on the back. But this wisdom has to work a work in our hearts. And, and that is that work. That, that to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Yes. So that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us. He works this thing in our hearts. Yeah. Now what do we do? We stay there till we see Him. And we just keep staying there till we see Him. And you know what? When we see Him, we'll see Him how? As, as He, he is. 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 And when we see Him as He is, we'll be like Him. Oh my gosh. 
Man, it sounds to me like we need to be doers of the Word. <laughs> yeah. We need to be looking, continuous, looking, 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 looking. Okay? Like I told you before, the one on the cross was already dead in trespasses and sin. Already dead. Now, you know this. You know, I told you a few weeks ago that we have to cross that River Jordan to get into the promised land, the land of Canaan. Now, we've always preached the Red Sea was a death, and then up here's a death, but I'm telling you, the Red Sea was a passing through. But uh, if you'll go read that, it says enter into the midst, or I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but it has no recollection of them coming out. The Red Sea was death. When they came out, you know what he said? Israel is my son, not sons. He said that right over there. Israel is my son, my firstborn, one son. Israel, the nation, went into the Red Sea, passed through the Red Sea, but Israel, his son, one son, came out. A many member body, oh yeah, 600,000 of them, but they came out as one. Do you see that? Now they come and they wander into the wilderness and they cannot get into the river or cannot get over into the land of Canaan. Why can't they get over into the land of Canaan? Because of the River Jordan. So what is the River of Jordan? It is a divine realization. And you're not coming over this river into the promised land until you have a divine realization about Christ Jesus. And His life is your life. That there's only one life and that is His. You will sit there on that river. Now how did they get through that river? When you see the ark. There was no passing through this river until they seen the ark. Now who's the ark? The ark is Jesus Christ. You're not getting through this river till you see Jesus. And when you see Jesus, what happens? River rolls back. River rolls back all the way to Adam. River rolls back. You come across on dry shot. Now listen, that's view number one, right? But there's a, He appears the second time. Oh gosh, how did He appear the second time? What happened when they got over there? He said, take 12 stones. Set up a memorial. And then he said, I want you to make sharp stones and circumcise the people because they hadn't been circumcised. Yes, yes. And once he circumcised the people, you go read this in Joshua 5 or 6, can't remember which. Once he circumcised the people, what happened? Joshua's looking out and he sees a man standing there yeah. as a captain of the Lord of hosts. Yes. Appearing number two. You see that? Yes. Appearing number two. Why? He appears the first time on this side, but you ain't going to get through the River Jordan till you see. And then when he appears there, you get through the River Jordan, there's another appearing, and now he's the captain of the Lord of hosts. He didn't show up this time with sin. He no. shows up without sin. Yes. To them who look for him, he shall appear. Do you, do you see all that? Are you with me? So we, we got to see these things. Man, it's exciting stuff to me. I don't know about you, but, but it's exciting to me. Now, now you see, uh, Lazarus, he is, he is dead. And like I said, but Jesus said, this, this death, this death, this sickness is not unto death. Remember, this whole creation is, is, is subject to vanity, but it's subject to hope. Created in hope. Expectation. Right? Expectation. But this Son of Man, now I want you to get this view right, but this Son of Man died. Now this is who Lazarus is a type of. He's a type of the Son of Man. Now Jesus realizes this because if you go over, you'll see in verse 33, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, He groaned in the Spirit and was troubled. You know what Jesus is seeing? He's seeing His death. He's seeing this thing right here. He, he, he knows what's coming. He's, he's looking at it. He's groaning. Verse 38, Jesus therefore again groaning in Himself cometh to the grave. He cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay on it. Now remember, Jesus is seeing this. This is Lazarus that's laying in this grave. He says, where have you laid him? They take him to the grave. Jesus sees a great stone on it. And you know, I've heard all these things preaching about the stone and the law and all that other <coughs> stuff. And, and that's, all, that's all good stuff right there. But there's something more important than that stone. 
There's something more important. This, this thing's about Lazarus and this sickness, which is why? To the glory of God. Don't worry about the stone. We preach the stone too much. We need to go back and preach the glory. Yes. yes. Do you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what. Jesus said, take the stone away. Let's get that thing out of the way. And you know what? That's what I think sometimes in preaching. Let's get that stone. Let's get that out of the way. Let's quit, let's quit talking about the law. The law's done. It's over. It's done. Let's quit talking about Let's start talking about Jesus. Let's get back to just pure and simple Jesus Christ. Yes. Let's get back to talking about His love and His purity and His grace and yes. just all the goodness yes. about Let's just quit talking about the law. Yeah. Roll that thing away. Get that thing out of here. Yeah. Be, be done with that. As soon as you try to change your message, you know what Martha says? Now come on, preacher. Lazarus is stinking. Lazarus is laying in there stinking. If we try to get out of this law stuff, and we try to roll this, you know what's behind that is dead. Mm -hmm. Not only dead, didn't just die this morning, this thing has been dead. It's a rotten corpse. Mm -hmm. I could just hear an out warning, Jesus. Now, I just want to tell you what, you start preaching this stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring something forth you don't want to bring forth. You know what Jesus says to her? Did I not tell you that this was for the glory of God? Did I not tell you that you would see the glory of God? Did I not tell you that? I mean, look what he says. If you would believe that thou shouldest see the glory of God, did I not tell you you're going to see? But I thought it was a rotten corpse in there. But I told you you would see the glory of God. He would end the tomb as Lazarus, a dead man. One dead man. But I just told you, you're going to see the glory of God. Now remember, where is the glory of God? The glory of God, we see the knowledge of the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ and we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now what is the glory of God? I just told you, we just see the rotten corpse in there. He's dead, been dead four days. And I told you, if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. And He says, I knew that thou hearest me always because of the people which stand by, I said that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now brothers, sisters, who came forth? Who came forth? Now in this, it says Lazarus came forth, but I want to tell you what. Who came forth? He came forth in the increase of himself. The, self, the corn of wheat had fell to the ground and died, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He came forth in the increase of Himself. Now listen. He cannot come forth until when? Until the Son of God tells Him to come forth. The Son of Man is laying there in that tomb, Patty. Until He says come forth. But when He, who is your life, shall appear, you shall appear with Him also. Do you, do you see that? In glory. So what is the glory of God? It's the resurrection. Yes, it it's is. the increase of Himself. Now where is the resurrection? The resurrection is in you because you have this treasure in earthen vessels. Seek those things which are above. They're in a whole other realm. I mean, can you imagine you are walking around with the life of Christ in you? The life of God Almighty is running through your veins? Now listen, I, there is a Scripture in there that says this is the earnest of our expectation. Now here's what we do as dummies. Okay? What we'll do is we'll say earnest. What does earnest mean? Anybody that's ever bought a house, we know that you've got to put down an earnest payment. Right? So we'll say that we've received the earnest. In other words, we got a little bit of Jesus. Come on now. Think about it. You didn't get a little bit of Jesus. No. You got the fullness. Yes. You got yes. all that He is Amen. running through your veins. Everything that's in Him. You know what that word earnest really means? Of a certainty. Of a surety. He has given us His Spirit. Of a surety He Himself is abiding in us. Resurrection life. And I'm telling you what, he, wherever you are, He's wanting to manifest, not you. 
Himself. Himself. Yes. 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 Whatever, at your work, yes. wherever you are, he yes. says, look, I wanted to come forth. Yes. I don't care about you coming forth. I've done away with you at the cross. Yes. Yes. You are dead and your life is here with Christ and God. But now we pray, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus come forth. Clyde come forth. No, it's Jesus. Right. It's Christ come yes, it forth. Is. Christ come And when he comes forth, what does he say? Remember, we fell and our feet is dead. And he laid his right hand upon me. Right? And he said, fear not. For I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys. Yes. Of hell yes. and of death. I got yes. the keys. Yes. Now you are, the keys. Well, I got the understanding. Now you want to walk in this Canaan land. You want to walk in this fullness, this land. And Abraham saw. He saw from afar off, brother. And I got the understanding. I got the understanding that'll bring you into this fullness Amen. that you can walk into this newness of life. I went into the ground as one seed, but when I came out as a many yes. members, Amen. Many, many, I brought the increase of myself. Yes. That's how I brought the increase of myself. Yes. Amen. Fall into the ground and die. Yes. And now I brought nothing else but me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing but Jesus. Amen. Nothing but Christ. Wow. Yes. That's all it is. Yes. That's all it is. So you see the difference. Yes. You see the difference. I'm going to give you one more scripture, and then we're going to let these lovely ladies and this young man sing. Okay. Uh, listen, let's just go back to John. We're in John chapter 5. Verily, verily, verse 24, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath eternal life, and shall not, Come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, who brings him forth, brother, the Son of God, is calling forth the Son of Man. Can you believe that? The Son of God is bringing forth the Son of Man, of which you are a many-membered man. And you're going to hear that voice, and you're going to, what did he say? Lazarus, Son of Man, come forth. Come forth, brother. Come forth. Come on out of there. And the voice of the Son of God, and they shall, they that hear shall live. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Woo, I mean, that gets me going. I hear something. I hear something. Do you hear it? Oh, yeah. Man, that's good stuff. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Now listen, we ain't even done yet. That's just for the believer. That's just for the household that love you. Remember Martha and Mary? This was the beloved of God. But there's a whole lot of people out here, right? Yes, yes. Hmm. I wonder what we're going to do with them. For the Father hath life in Himself, so He hath given to the Son to have life in Himself, and He hath given Him authority to execute judgment, and because He is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear Oh, his voice. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> all that are in the graves are going to hear his voice. Notice it didn't say, I'm going to hear your voice. Uh, they're not going to hear your voice. They're not going to hear Zach's voice. They're going to hear his, his voice. voice. Now let me tell you something. Oh gosh, this this is the good part. Where are you buried? See, we want to go out here to Green Hills and go all this mother stuff, but you got a burying place because if you be dead with him, you shall also be buried with him. You're buried in his body. You're putting your death right in the body of Christ. Yes. So he's coming up to this tomb. It was a cave. I just thought, man, old David lived in a cave. I wonder what that meant. We call it the cave of Medullam. He was right in Christ. Yes. Oh. He was right in Christ. Oh, Jonah got swallowed up by a well. He was right in Christ. Yes, he, he got was. swallowed right up. Yes. He was right in Christ. And Lazarus got swallowed right up into Christ. And it was time for him to come forth. And you know what I was thinking this whole time? I thought, man, it's time for this, for this church, for this people right yes. here. To come forth. Yes, sir. Yes. It's time I hear the yes, Lord is out there saying, All right, guys, it's time for y'all to come forth. Yes, y'all been in the tomb, y'all been buried with me in baptism, y'all been hiding in that tomb for four days and your body stinks. Yeah. And now it's time to come forth. Mm -hmm. And now. He's the one that calls it forth that the power may be of God. Now here's what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. Lucy. Yes. 
we got to take that humanity, that Adam humanity off of him. Yes. We got to tell these people, listen, you can't be doing, the, you can't be thinking you're just an old sinner saved by grace. That's I've done right. away with who you are. The only life you have now is the life of Christ. Yes. That is all you have. Yes. I took away with all of that. And the reason you're not coming over here is because you need to see the ark. You just need to see the ark. You need to see the ark of God. Yes, you do. And when you see the ark of God, you just wait. Then you're going to see the captain of his house. You're going to see the captain. Amen. You'll see the captain. Man, that's good stuff. Man. That, is, that is good stuff. Now listen, that's all I got. Y'all have to come back Wednesday to get the follow-up. That's all I got. All right. I'm going to cut you off. We're going to have to practice more before we can do that. Sorry, we couldn't. Sorry, we couldn't. Well, that's okay. Listen, let's, let's do one last song and we're going to leave. We're going to do Savior Cain. Save your cane. Y'all guys come to your food. We're going to do one last song.